<laughs> yeah. All right, so we're going to get started. This is a recorded session. So if you would please mute yourself so no, we good. cannot hear your background noise, no. that would be amazing. I don't know Thank how. you so much. All right, one last time, mute yourself. If the speakers, um, some of the speakers and teachers um, like the back and forth, some um, not. So if they want um, or they want that, they'll let you know. Um, with that, we're going to go ahead and officially get started. Welcome everyone to the East Bay Bible relationship number two. And so um, number two, meaning this is our second series and the second day, um, the second set um, of our series. So we're going to start off and set the protocol to Pastor Ron and to Pastor Derek, um, to all of God's children, our visitors, any center friends, if they're on the line, we are so glad that you are here. We're going to be talking about continuing the discussion on grief and loss. And so yesterday we talked about the logistics of grief and loss. And so uh, uh, Brother Ellis Jackson was amazing. And the attorney that spoke yesterday, fantastic. And all of those who, who were on yesterday, it was wonderful. So today we're gonna be discussing the emotional um, parts of grief. Us. And so uh, to open us up with the scripture and the will be on uh, Sister Gwen Holloway. So I'm going to turn it over to Sister Gwen and then I'll come back and walk you through the rest. All right, Gwen, the floor is yours. Okay, I'm here. All good right. morning, everyone, or good afternoon, I should say. Uh, glad to see all your faces here. Um, and uh, I am going to start. Um, with a scripture. This is from Psalms 34, um, verses one through eight. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that feareth him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Amen. May uh, we add a blessing to the uh, readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Um, and thank God, Heavenly Father, for this day for us all. Okay. And let us bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come just thanking you for who you are, creator of heaven and earth. You see all, you know all, you're all powerful. You are our provider, our protector, our healer, our refuge, and I, our com comforter in times of need. And this class is definitely going to touch on those things that um, you would give us during our time of need, during our time of grief and loss. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, for the victory that you gave us all over sin through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for you hung on that cross. You died for our sins. You um, shed your blood for the remission of our sins, Heavenly Father, and you paid our sin debt. And we just can't thank you enough for what you did for us on that old rugged cross, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would touch and remove any fears or anxieties um, from anyone, Heavenly Father, who is grieved or having um, issues, Heavenly Father, in their life. 
and if they need you, we know that you give us that perfect peace that surpasseth all understanding. Um, and we know that you can give us joy even in times of sorrow. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and are in the throes of grief, some even right now. We have um, church members who have just lost, recently lost uh, family members. And for us all, we, we experience uh, that grief and that loss at some time in our life. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, and we pray that when uh, that time comes that we will lean on you in all ways as our comforter, you will be our refuge, you will give us that joy and that peace that surpasses all understanding during those critical times. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, and we just give you all the honor, the glory and praise that is yours and yours alone. We pray, I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. All right. Do this. All right. So let's just uh, set the table a little bit um, with housekeeping reminders. Um, so please be mindful again of your background noise. I'm going to mute your mics as I see that they're. Um, mostly all muted, um, especially background noise. Don't forget to position your cameras properly. We're so excited to see your smiling faces. Um, if you would limit distractions, please. Um, so no eating on screen, no talking or answering other phone calls. Avoid multitasking so that you can focus on what God has in store for you today. Again, this series is being recorded um, and uh, they, it will be available to go back and listen um, after um, all of the series are completed. It will be on the website. And so you'll be able to go. Um, and if you miss something, then you can hear it again. All righty. So now that we have that, uh, without further ado, we're going to uh, move into our teaching. So yesterday, again, we were talking about the logistics of grieving with uh, Moses and Joshua. Today, um, we will be uh, talking about the emotions um, of grief and loss, uh, featuring Ruth, Naomi, and Orpa. And so our speaker today, her bio, Deacon Vangeria Harvey loves the Lord and serves the Lord with gladness. She is a longstanding member of Allen Temple Baptist Church. She accepted God's call and was ordained as a deacon on April 24, 2016, which was seven years ago. And she has been blessed with opportunity to share God's word. Recently, the 2023 Seven Last Words service for the True Community Baptist Church of Oakland. She currently serves as the vice chair of the Allen Temple Scholarship Ministry and prior chair of the Children's Ministry. And Harvey has been blessed to work with ministries for young people, including Girl Scout and Boy Scout troops at Allen Temple. She is committed to serve and strives to always give back to the community. Her favorite scripture is Romans 8:28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. She is married to Brother Haywood Harvey and blessed with two wonderful children, Harrison and Madison. And so with that, she is totally a woman of God looking forward. I will turn it over now to Miss Vangeria Harvey. Good morning, good afternoon. Praise the Lord, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. And so um, I just want to uh, give honor to God uh, who is the head of my life. Um, really want to thank uh, your great pastors of this church, Pastor Ron Jackson and Pastor Derek Jackson, for this opportunity, as well as to my dear friend, Deaconess Lene Buller, uh, to whom extended this invitation. And so much gratitude uh, to all of you um, and um, to um, whatever officer member friend of uh, East Bay Bible Church. And um, uh, this is the way in which uh, I am coming to you. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I just usually say praise the Lord, everybody, because we just have so much to uh, praise God for. Uh, and so this is what God put on my heart. I hope that um, it will um, touch or bless uh, and anoint and be in accordance 
uh, with what you all had planned for uh, for this day. Uh, let us go to the word of prayer. Most gracious Father, we thank you for being a love, kind, gracious, passionate, uh, caring Father, dear Lord. We just thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just lift you up right now for being such a, just such a good God, dear Lord, and for giving us our your son uh, on the cross, dear Lord. For that, we give you praise, dear Lord. Lord, I just ask right now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight for Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. So Lord, I just pray that anything that is of me is decreased in the name of Jesus and that your people would only hear from you by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And it's in your precious name that we pray and say, amen. 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 So um, I know that this uh, series is focusing on um, Ruth. And so I'm just going to highlight a couple scriptures um, before going into um, uh, a little bit of the study uh, on this word. Uh, I'll ask you to look at the Ruth, the first chapter. Uh, we'll go through the 14th through the 16th verses and then continue from the 19th through the 21st verses. And it reads thusly. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods, return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. And then to the 19th verse. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? She said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has brought calamity unto me? This afternoon, I hope to share with you a little bit about uh, in the season of grief. Amen? Amen. The book of Ruth begins in a time where there uh, is no king. Uh, the judges are ruled. And there was no food in the land. And so like many families living in desperate situations uh, today, Naomi and Elimelech, her husband, uh, left their hometown of Bethlehem to try and find food and a better life across the border in Moab. We won't digress into uh, whether or not there was a lot of disobedience in going to Moab, as we know that there were uh, they were serving other gods. They were not serving the God, uh, the great God who brought the Israelites out of Egypt. But nevertheless, that's a different message for another time. It's hard enough uh, to be a refugee fleeing to a new place to try and survive. But for Naomi, she faces the heartache of losing her husband her life partner and the father of her two sons shortly after arriving in the country land. She's a widow, a single mother who must figure out how to survive and keep her family together. She was fortunate to have two sons and they were able to marry. However, over a course of a few years, both of her sons also died. She's left with just her daughters-in-law, Orpa and Ruth. She acknowledges she can give Ruth and Orpa absolutely nothing. She tells the two young women to go home, go back to your people and basically hope they can find you another husband. Mm -hmm. Naomi lets her bitterness at the world get the best of her. She pushes her daughters-in-law and others away. She makes people call her Mara, which means bitterness. She feels empty, like all the life and joy has been taken away from her. There is this emotional, psychological, and spiritual condition of Naomi, which is a complete state of grief and loss. Yet Ruth, hallelujah. Ruth, living with the loss of her husband, a young woman, childless, a Moabite, who is not seen and accepted by the Israelite people. 
But Ruth would not let Naomi stay in her bitterness. You see, she clings to her. She holds her so tightly. Even though Naomi argues and compels her to go back with your sister-in-law, go back, I am of no use. So Ruth would have easily turned back. She was grieving too. She could have walked away from Naomi, leaving her all alone in her bit bitterness, yet Ruth clung. Ruth recognized in that moment, Naomi needed someone to be with her. It was not ever about what Naomi could give to Ruth, but it was about Ruth's deep love for her mother-in-law. Ruth does not stop Naomi from grieving. She simply is there to say, look, I'm not leaving you. Together, the two of them bound by deep love for one another. And then there is Orpah, the third, the lesser known, also in grief from the loss of her husband, bearing no children, but moreover facing the loss of relationship with her mother-in-law and her sister-in-law, whom she deeply treasured. Yet she heeded Naomi's command and returned home. Did her grief and fear lead her home to what was known and expected? Did Orpah experience resignation and detachment by leaving? Even so, it doesn't mean that she still did not have despair. Sometimes, sometimes our stories can be silent, saints, and lost during our grief. So let's talk about grief. What is grief? Mm. That deep sorrow, especially caused by someone's death or an unbearable loss. Uh, I read an author by the name of Edgar Jackson. Don't know if he's related to y'all's pastors, but he was pretty poignant. And he described grief this way. He said, grief is the silent knife-like terror and sadness that comes a hundred times a day when you start to speak to someone who is no longer there. Grief is the emptiness that comes when you eat alone after eating with another for many years. Grief is teaching yourself to go to bed without saying goodnight to the one who has died. Grief is the helpless wishing that things were different when you know they are not and will never be again. Amen. We associate grief with the death of a loved one, which is often the cause of the most intense type of grief, but any loss can cause grief. Loss of relationship, divorce, loss of health, loss of job, loss of finances, loss of a cherished dream, loss of a friendship. I'll suggest to you or suggest that even our society in this moment in time in 2023 is experiencing loss and grief with the dual pandemics and COVID and churches not open and losses in our congregation and not being able to hug or to touch people. Grief is in our midst. Right. And then grief is in our midst and we thank God because he always gives us uh, the Bible to be able to relate to everything that is going on in our present age. Amen? Amen. And so you can look to multiple Bible characters who have experienced deep loss and sadness. I will not belabor the story of Job, but you know what he said. Yet though they slay me, I will trust him. Hallelujah. We know the story of Hannah and we know the story of David. Hallelujah. We have all of his weeping his sobs in the, in the Psalms, amen. But even Jesus, hallelujah, mm. Jesus mourned after Lazarus, his friend. So he wept. The Bible says Jesus wept. Jesus grieved. So I ask you the question today, how do we emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually handle the painful season called grief? Let me, let me make uh, three suggestions to you on this afternoon. The first thing, we need to face our feelings in the season of grief. Mm. 
the grief can be dizzying. It can leave you with a, a multitude of emotions. When you are in despair, your feelings can be all over the place. You can be happy one moment and sad the next, weeping one moment and laughing yeah. the next, excited one moment yeah. and desolate the other. Your emotions can take over you at any moment or at any time. Yeah. Let's go back to the word of God. In the first chapter of Ruth, this is a picture of hopelessness and despair. And while a few verses mention the death of a father and the death of two sons, I would like you to ponder the fact that there are thousands of unwritten pages of pain, emotion, grief, and loss in the lives of Naomi, Ruth, and Orpah that we will never know. There are pages of unwritten pain, emotion, grief, and loss in each and every one of our lives. Or let me say in my life that somebody will never know. Hallelujah. Yeah, but yeah. these three women experience and express their grief together. See, the Bible says that they wept. They cried openly. The weeping expressed the grief exploding from years of struggle, living in a patriarchal society with no males that seemingly leaves them with no future. Hallelujah. But the devil is a liar. Though they are, they all responded differently. Their pain was similar. There are people who are experiencing the same tragedy as you and me, and they're going and they're going through it. Even if they are different, they're from different walks of life or they respond in a different manner. I ask you this afternoon, do you give yourself the space to feel, to grieve, to mourn? Your feelings matter. It's important, cathartic to express your emotions during your time of despair and pain. And though I know the word on the, you know, on YouTube and TikTok says, don't be in your feelings. I'm going to tell you today, you can be in your feelings. See, in periods of grief and loss, it is easy to withdraw and handle heavy burdens alone. We can look at the text and we can see that Naomi's natural response to the pain was one of fear, anger, and isolation. She was pushing her daughters away. She said, go back, each of you, to your mother's house. But the story shows us that we cannot bear grief, pain, heartache, calamity, desolation, despair alone. Yeah. No. Ruth. Yeah. Oh. Ruth stays with her. In the text, we see that Naomi declares her feelings and her bitterness. Mm -hmm. And as the young people would say, Naomi kept it 100. When you look at the 13th verse, she says, no, my daughters, it is more bitter for me to, than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. And then she goes on later in the 20th verse to say, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. Naomi declared her name, her, 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 her personhood, her being is no longer pleasant and lovely, but it is now bitter. Mm. That's something to resonate on. It's now bitter. Why? Because she says the almighty, we know who the almighty is. That's the father. That's our God. That's our protector. Our one has dealt bitterly with her. That's where she is at that very moment. And after more than a decade away from home, greeted by past acquaintances, she's not fake. She tells them her situation. She's not putting on a brave face. She sees her life desperate in the hands of God. She's truthful about her, her life. She's not hiding any feelings. There's no pretense that her anger is not there. There's no sweeping aside with either a stoic upper lip, nor with false affirmations. Oh, God is good. God is good all the time. Because all <laughs> in that moment does not feel good. It does not feel well. <laughs> 
And no. even if, from it the perspective not. of her faith, she knows that God's <laughs> providence and God's providence all is well, it doesn't feel like it yeah. right at that moment. Amen. And so, Amen. when recognizing Amen. that there are feelings and emotions, we can see that Naomi grieves. She grieves and she mourns, but the praise report is that she does it with God. See, you can express your pain, your frustration, your cries, your hurts, because God will hear you. Amen. In the word, Amen. God tells us, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Yeah. Yeah. Is there something, something right now in your life, in your spirit that you need to sit with? You need to sit with God and grieve over. Only you can answer that question, but God will receive you and your feelings. Amen? Amen. Secondly, follow God's direction uh, in the season of grief. As we read chapter one, we see that they all read, excuse me, <laughs> Ruth and Orpa follow God's direction in order to survive through their sorrow and their pain. Each of them had an individual decision to make in their time of loss. How would they individually respond and follow the guiding voice of God? We can look first at Naomi, go to verse six, and it tells you that verse says, then Naomi heard in Moab, that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So Naomi and her daughters-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. Naomi decided to go back home. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that sometimes in the midst of loss and grief and hopelessness, the hardest thing to do at all is to take a step in the direction of starting over mm. or to take a step oh. in the direction of going back. back. Just a step can be hard. Mm. Just a step in the direction of receiving light and blessing again from God. The text uses the word again, talks about how the good crops were back in the land of Judah again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we got to go through some things again. We can be paralyzed though. We can be paralyzed in our grief to hang on to the last remnants of our past, hanging on to what we lost. Our depression, our mental state can cause us to lack energy, to do anything at all, because we want to give up. We want to keep counting our losses. We want to wallow in the self-pity, because somehow or another in our minds that feels easier than taking a step. Mm -hmm. Orpah mm -hmm. also makes a decision. And she's led to return to the home of her Moabite people. And in verse 14, it says that she said goodbye. Sometimes you got to say goodbye, even though it hurts. And then Ruth makes a declaration. We know the text. It's a familiar passage, that 16th verse, when she says, do not urge me to leave you or return from following you. She said, for where you go, I will go. Yes. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Hallelujah. Your people shall be my people. Your God, my God. Ruth is exclaiming and, and echoing a response to the far-reaching love of God. You see, Ruth's response is not about fighting or flying or leaving. It's about being rooted and grounded and being bound to someone else. In the face of loss, family ties, or close relationships, 
deepen through a spiritual bond of connection and commitment and community. Don't you know we need connection and commitment and community to get through the season of grief? Amen. The rent group is willing Amen. to live, worship, work, advocate, walk alongside, and find her earthly resting place with Naomi from this day forward. Did you see how her vows Amen. extended beyond the death of her husband? Amen. So Ruth and Naomi, arm in arm, make the journey. Some say, some scholars say it was a treacherous journey. I don't know the landscape, but they said it was a treacherous journey across the mountains to the town of Bethlehem. So they had to follow the leading and the guidance and the direction of God to journey through their pain. Naomi took the pain with her back to Bethlehem. She didn't run away from it. We read in verse 19 about their arrival and they could see it on her face. She could, you could see everything that she had been through on their face, on her face. She had left a life with, uh, she had left life there that was full. She had a husband, she had two sons, she had the, the a provision that was gonna be that was gonna be taking care of her. And now she returns back with nothing but a Moabite woman. <laughs> and we know that Moabites, right, were mm -hmm. even banned from mm -hmm. worshiping in the same areas of the Israelites. Right. So she comes back with less than she left with. But God will not cancel your journey, saints. He will not cancel your journey, even if you have to journey. Yeah, but what I can tell you what God will do is that he will strengthen you and he will show you how to navigate that journey. Yeah. You see, God yeah. stayed with each of those women despite their circumstances and through the path he was leading them. We follow a God that says that there will be mountains, there will be valleys, there will be trials, there mm -hmm. will be tribulations. You may be weak physically, emotionally, psychologically, financially. Yeah. But when you are in despair, God says, I will give you strength, strength for another day, strength for another breath, strength for another step, hallelujah. In your despair, God just says, come near to me and heed my voice. Naomi decided to live, hallelujah, to receive again from God. We have to do the same thing, saints. For you, it might yeah. be a decision to see a Christian counselor or to join a small group where you can unpack your pain. It might just be a decision to get up out of the bed in the morning mm -hmm. because that might be the hardest thing to do. But I tell you, God will give you a strength. He will give you a strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He give you the wings to soar as eagles. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes. You just got to make the choice. You have to make the choice that the direction that God has ordained and destined for your life is the choice you want to make. Amen. Amen. Thirdly, Amen. remember God is faithful in the season of grief. Through it all, through it all, hallelujah, God is faithful. Through it all, I've learned to depend on God, hallelujah, y'all know the song, God is faithful. There are many, many scriptures in the Bible that remind us of God's faithfulness in times of mourning. He told us, I will be with you in the valley of the shadow of death, hallelujah. So Naomi shows us in this text how she puts on the full faith of God while at the same time she's grieving. Because what did she do, saints? She prayed. She talked about the Almighty. 
Don't you know that you can call on the Father in any time of your need or distress? The word, the, the old hymn said, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know is thou withdraw thyself from me. Whither, hallelujah, Lord, shall I go? See, in my sanctified imagination, uh, Naomi was walking in those mountains and stretching back, even with her heavy heart and with her bitterness saying, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then we have Ruth. Ruth epitomizing faithfulness with endurance and with strength. She said, your God is my God. This is a, uh, an expression of loyalty to God. There is power in this declaration. Commitment, even in grief. Is it possible? Is it, is it, is it imaginable that her proclamation that she would embrace Naomi's God is just because of the custom of the day to embrace the local God? I bet you not. I say, I think it's deeper. See, I think in all of that time that Ruth was spending with Naomi, she saw God carry Naomi. She saw God protect Naomi. She saw God carry Naomi through the loss of her husband and her sons. She saw God carry Naomi when she was hungry. She saw God carry Naomi through her difficult life. Mm -hmm. In other words, Ruth had been watching Naomi and Naomi's faith and it impacted her so much, hallelujah, that she said, I want the God that you're serving, hallelujah. <laughs> when the world would say that Naomi had nothing, Ruth said she has a God. Hallelujah. A God that will never leave her nor forsake her. A God that will rise her up on the early morning. A God that will be her bomb in Gilead. Her bomb, her God, her God that will be with her each and, each and every situation. All right. My life would shine so that others would be able to see God and say, yes, hallelujah, your God will be my God because I've seen what your God can do. I've seen how he's carried you through grief. I've seen how he's carried you through sorrow. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah, Lord. So, you know, I think that, you know, if I look at Ruth, I think that she had this peace that surpassed all understanding, that she was really enveloped in this peace because she was able to commit to journey with Naomi. She worked, she was seen as virtuous, she followed through instructions, and then she was given God's favor. Hallelujah, hand in marriage to Boaz, becoming the mother of Obed, in the lineage to Jesus. Hallelujah, God is faithful. Mm -hmm. God walked with them, talked with them, told them that they were not alone in the midst of our loss, in the midst of our, our despair. Can we have the faith to believe that God is still at work? Can we open our eyes long enough to let the Lord wipe away our tears and maybe be able to take away the clouds out of our head and off of our eyes that we can see that maybe there's a blessing. Mm. A mm. blessing in all of this. The words of Job can feel so piercing because it says, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Can I just suggest to you that maybe sometimes there is a blessing. I know that we can often only see the loss and the pain and feel the pain, but there's faith in God's word and he assures us that there is another side because God is always working for our good. He is always working for our good. 
This story, this story in the book of Ruth is so poignant. It is a poignant depiction of grief that I can empathize with. All three of the women, maybe you can see parts of your life in all three of the women being bitter, being unseen, mm -hmm. being able to stand next and have a peace that you could actually bear your, your mother's grief with her. Grief, loss, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a loved one, whether it's a change in life, whether our landscape has changed, all of us in this thing called life are gonna experience. And for myself, there have been times of loss and I, I won't belabor all of them, but I will tell you about one. Ooh, you Lord. In June of 2020, I lost the dearest, closest person in my life after my husband, my sister cousin. Mm. Her loss was so hard that I could not process the grief. She was faithful. She was God-fearing. She was a first lady for 30 years. She was healthy. She loved me and I loved her. I could talk to her about anything. I talked to her on Tuesday and on Friday, she was looking forward to her grandchildren coming to visit. And on the Saturday morning, she was gone. Mm. And I the question, hallelujah. What if I had called her on Friday? <laughs> Well, she had made it to that Saturday. I'm not God. Hallelujah, Lord. Was I ever there for her as much as she was for me? I had to question. I didn't know that there was something wrong. But was there something wrong? You see, God has a plan for each of our lives. There is an appointed time. But it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. <laughs> doesn't mean we don't miss our loved ones. And we all know Ecclesiastes. God has already told us there's a time for everything. Yeah. There's a time for everything. And there's a season for every activity under the heavens. He's already told us there is a time to be born. Mm -hmm. And there's a time to die. There's a time to plant and to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep. And a time to laugh. A time to mourn. And a time to dance. A time to scatter stones. And a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Amen. So I'm here to tell you that we get another chance. We get another day to live life to the fullness and glory of what he set forth for you and for me. And I cannot stand here today and tell you that the pain and sorrow go away. But I can not tell you we serve a good God who bears our pain. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. I will not tell you there won't be moments that you question why God, how God. But I can tell you that you can trust him to carry you through because God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And most importantly, the Lord gave us his promises. Yeah. And God keeps his promises. So for those who are grieving, the Bible says, <laughs> you will not mourn as those who have no hope. Right. Right. We will see our loved ones again in the rapture. Amen. 
And during the remaining time we have here on earth, the word encourages us to live. So despite the pandemic, despite COVID, racism, oppression, homelessness, God's life-giving power is Jesus Christ, is the force that shapes our every existence, not the power of death. Amen. As believers, we must consider how God is seeking to be glorified, how God is seeking to be glorified through our health and our sickness, our joys and our sorrows, our tranquility and our hardships, our pleasures and our pains, our living as well as our dying. Mm. In the end, thank you, Lord. Ruth and Naomi experienced bountiful blessings. God provided a redeemer and a new life. God has provided us a redeemer and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hold on to God. He will restore you with revived life, new purpose, new direction, overwhelming love and joy in the season of grief, saying, I say to you, face your feelings. Follow God's direction and remain faithful until the very end. To God, to God, to God be the glory. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. God is faithful. All righty. Thank you, Vangir. All right. And one thing I didn't say. Um, uh, at the beginning is, is be thinking about how we can help to serve um, the grieving um, in our time. So we need to move swiftly and we will do that. Next up, um, we're going to be talking about the stages of grief. And so our speaker who was coming forward, captivating, informative, and joy to all her audience's past, Michaela Mims is no stranger to commanding the love of her audience at workshops, conferences, and more by blending her speaking experience, her formal education in psychology, and the lessons drawn from her professional private therapy practice. Michaela uses her voice to speak directly into the hearts of her audiences. Michaela has graduated from Patton University in Oakland, California with a Bachelor of Arts in Pastoral Studies. She also holds a Master of Arts in Marriage and Family Therapy from Western Seminary located in Milpitas, California. Using these professional accomplishments as a stepping stone for her tr true calling, Michaela has gone on to become the founder, owner, and clinical director of Still Waters Therapy, a private clinical therapy practice. Beyond her professional accomplishments, Michaela Mims manages many roles in both her private life. She is a wife, a mother to four adult children, and the grandmother to two additional little blessings. Michaela and her husband, LaShawn Mims, pastor of Judah Fellowship Church in Elk Grove, California, where they work together to bring the community together while serving God and his people. And they also host a podcast second time around. I give you woman of God, Michaela Mims. Good morning, afternoon. Hi, this Michaela. <laughs> Lene Fuller. Y'all <laughs> know it's really weird to hear your own like bio. I'm sitting here going, who is that? Uh, and so I don't get in trouble. Hey, Mama Tough. Hey, hey. I'm not trying to catch no whoopings. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, all right. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. I pray that you are well. Um, give me one second while I get my my little self together here. Um, I am so excited and pleased to share with you all for just a short period of time. Um, uh, most of you don't know me, but Miss Lene Bullard, that's my sister girl right there. That's, you know, we we get together on the on Fridays with a with a couple of other friends and I don't know what they call it. I call it the hen party because we just get to get on there and cluck. And so, so that's what I call it. But um, just want to acknowledge the the pastors and, and the work that they do and the entire uh, 
clergy staff at East Bay Bible, and I am so happy to be with you. Uh, yeah, I'm a licensed therapist. I'm a, I'm a mama. I'm a mimi. I'm a wife. I'm all of those things. Um, but most of all, I am a child of God. And I tell people all the time that I am not a, um, I'm not a Christian counselor. I'm a therapist who happens to be a Christian, and it informs the work that I do. So I'm a, I'm gonna do the right thing, and I'm gonna pray real quick before I go through these stages with you all. And um, if I go too fast, y'all just slow me down. I'll catch up. Oh, God, we give you thanks, honor, and praise, and glory today. Father, we bless your name today. This is a day that is unique and gifted to us, a day we've never seen before, oh, God, and it is a day that we will never see again. So we thank you for how creative you are, God. We thank you for how you have blessed us to come to this point. Father, as we go through these stages of grief, I ask, oh, God, that if anybody is triggered, that you rest your hand upon them of love, compassion, and peace. Father, I thank you for the gift of knowledge, and I thank you for the opportunity to share it with my people, your people. And I ask you, oh God, that you would be with me as I share these few tidbits for your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 I, and hey, hey, Mr. Bullard. Hey, hey. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Then my people. <laughs> Love them. So I am going to share my screen because I have a little graphic for you all um, to kind of help go through this. So um, hopefully a sister. Um, uh oh, Mr. B, you go. Um, allow me to share. OK, yeah, go ahead, there we go. Uh, let's see. We want just this graphic and share let's see give me one second can you all see that yes. how's that okay fantastic i'm going to close my view of you so i can go through um so i have um lots of clients that come see me and they're in various places in their life and grief is one of those things that does come up so from a clinical perspective. This is what I do with my clients when they come to me and they're in need of support. So um, five stages of grief are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Okay. So when we lose someone, the first thing that happens is we go into this space of shock, right? So that's denial. It's like, I can't believe they're gone. I just talked to them like sis just said, I just talked to this person and my condolences to you, my sister. I, I have a, a good, good girlfriend of 30 plus years. And, you know, even as a therapist, if something happened to her, you know, y'all would have to come get me. Um, so I appreciate where you are. I'll be praying for you. Um, so denial, that's, that's a normal reaction to rationalize overwhelming emotions. It's a defense mechanism that buffers the immediate shock of loss. So it's that, I just can't believe this happened. It's that moment. And so that's your first stage of denial, excuse me, first stage of grieving. Um, second stage is that of anger. Um, so as the numbing effects of denial begin to wear off, the pain of loss starts to take hold as we search for blame. We feel these intense, um, oh, typo, should be guilt, um, and sometimes we may lash out. So that's that kind of bubbling, rumbling that you're, you're, you're not sure why you're angry, but you're angry because this just shouldn't happen. Um, and so it's a just another phase of grief that we go through. Um, the third stage is that of bargaining. Um, this is that what if. You know, what if I had called sooner? What if I had gone by more? You know, what if I had taken so-and-so to the doctor or, you know, and grief is not necessarily the loss of human life. It could be the loss of a relationship. It can be the loss of a job. It can be the loss of, of a part of yourself. So some people have lost limbs, um, digits and things of that, you know, extremities. And so Loss is, loss is a lot of stuff and grief happens no matter how it comes, whether we lose a body part, a friendship, uh, a relationship with a loved one, the loved one themselves, a job, you all know what I'm saying. So um, grief is grief and loss is loss. It doesn't, it, it knows nothing. The brain def doesn't differentiate in that manner. So this is that space where we're like, I wish I really could have done more. I wish I could do this. This is, you know, sometimes we, um, 
I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Sometimes we have that person that's at, um, uh, y'all know, sometimes we go to the funeral and it's that person that's draped over um, the, the casket. I'm not trying to call anybody out. First of all, I hope Lene warned y'all about me. This is a very serious topic, but I am a very, I'm one of God's special children. And so that's, that's just how I am. Um, but bargaining also serves the purpose of giving us a temporary way to escape from the pain and it also allows us to start to build some hope because we start to compartmentalize from the shock and the anger. And we start to go, okay, well, maybe if I had done this and it's a way to just kind of soothe ourselves on our own. So it actually gives us a little bit of time to adjust to having that loss. Um, fourth stage is depression. So I want to be clear about this stage. So this depression is not the simple depression that we normally think of. So when we hear somebody say, I'm sad, I'm depressed, I, I can't get out of bed, I'm not motivated, that type of depression is different from the depression that we experience in grief. So it's not a sign of mental illness. It's an appropriate response to a great loss. Let me say it again. This type of depression is not mental illness. It is an appropriate response to a great loss. So during this time, you may experience intense sadness, sleep disturbance, meaning I can't fall asleep, right? Or insomnia. Um, I can't stay asleep. That's what we call interrupted sleep. Or um, I'm sleeping all the time, which is what we call hypersomnolence. So we are sleeping all of the time. It is our body and our mind's way of protecting us from the intense emotional experience that we're having. Um, we can have a loss of motivation. I just don't feel like doing anything. I just can't get up. I don't want to eat. I, I don't want to talk to anybody. And, um, you know, of course, typically, as um, typically in, in our community, Black community, first thing we do is we're cooking food, right? We're bringing it to the person. The person is like, I don't want to eat. That is a biological response to a psychological stressor. And so that is important for us to know. It is a biological response to a psychological stressor. And so your body will go through um, different phases of either wanting to eat to cope with the pain or not eat at all to cope with the pain. Um, some people actually, actually experience a heaviness in their body. They will also experience um, physical pain in their body. All of these things are normal signs and symptoms of depression that comes through grief. So I really wanted to hang out there just a little bit longer because it's important for people to know that this type of depression is not synonymous with um, the types of depression we see on, on TV when they're you know playing those ads and things of that nature. Um, and then our final um, phase of grief is acceptance, right? Um, this is the part that can take a little while to get to. So acceptance refers to accepting the reality of a loss and the fact that nothing can change that reality. This does not mean that the person is okay with the loss, right? I want to, I want to get us away from the mindset of, um, it's okay, right? Grief is not something that we get over. Grief is something that we move through. We, it's not something that, you know, people walk up to you, you should be over it by now. Your mom passed away six, seven years ago. You should be over it. That's not the case. You move through grief. That's why it's called stages, right? And let me be clear about stages. Not everybody will have all of these stages and they won't all come in this order they will ebb and flow. And that's the important thing to know. You may be going along just fine, feeling okay, and then something will happen. That's called a trigger. And when you get triggered, one of these phases may come up and you may be there for a day. You may be there for a month. You may be there for a year. And let me be clear, there is no one way to process your grief. There is no one way to process grief. And it's so important because we oftentimes, because we're uncomfortable, we want to rush people through their process. 
but that's not fair to the person and it's not fair to you. Um, my suggestion there is if you're not comfortable with helping somebody process grief, just be present. You know, it's like everybody don't know how to go to the hospital and visit somebody that's sick. Everybody doesn't know how to sit with somebody when they have grief. So it's really important that we don't exacerbate the pain, but that we support and sit in and hold the pain with that person, whatever their loss is. And so we it's not static. It just doesn't go like this. It's going to go up and down and up and down. Um, I think this year will make 11 years since my mother passed away um, in August and stuff goes great for a while. And then roundabout close to her birthday, I'll notice a little something pulling at me. And that's a reminder that this doesn't go away. It lessens in intensity. And so, but it still pulls. It could be a song that you hear. It could be a uh, Maybe you had a loved one that bakes very well. You can smell something that they used to bake and it'll bring you back and it may restart this cycle. So I want to make sure that everybody is clear that from a, a clinical, psychological, emotional perspective, this is this is not a straight line. It, it definitely is not a straight line. It can go up and it can go down. Anything can cause it to, to trigger back up. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to talk a little bit about down here in this area, complicated grief. I'm just going to read that to you because we don't talk about this part of grief. Um, this is this is so important. So if you don't catch most of this, catch this. Um, it's normal to feel numb, angry, sad, and depressed following a loss. However, as time passes, those emotions should lessen in severity. If they do not, you may be suffering from complicated grief or have transitioned into an actual depressive state. Um, if that's the case, please, whatever you do, please seek professional treatment because it's important that you take care of you. So I'm actually going to stop sharing this now and just kind of flow off the cuff just a smidge. Um, so again, grief is not one layered, it's multi-layered and anything can cause you to feel grieved, right? But it's important to know that um, even in all of that, God is with us, right? Even in the midst of all that, we are so, we don't grieve as others do, amen? And so because we don't grieve like the world does, we have an extra support system. So it's important to know that throughout these stages, there are gonna be different levels, you're not by yourself. Um, I'm looking at, says 24 participants, so at least 23 other people other than me are here for you if you need that support. If you, if you need to reach out for therapy, do that. Um, if you need to reach toward, toward pastor, do that. But you don't have to go through these cycles alone. And here's the thing. If you're grieving for 10 years, normal. If you're grieving for 20 years, normal. If you grieve for one day and then not the next day, normal, because nobody does it the same way, right? Because we serve a creative God and he, even in our pain, he's creative. So um, that's, that's what I got. Those are your stages of grief. And then just a little bit on the complicated grief, because I remembered, yeah, we should probably, we should probably include that. And God bless you. I'm finished. I don't know if I took too long or too short, Miss Lene, but I'm here to serve. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And I will, we're going to yield to the panel in just a moment. But if someone has a question for Michaela, um, we can take one or two right now. And then on the other side of the room will be open. And so I'll ask you, Miss Michaela, if you could please stick around. Um, and so if there's someone who needs it, but if someone has a question right now um, for Michaela, um, we'll a minute for that. All right. Or feel free to reach out at another time. That's no problem at all either. Okay, great. So, and she'll stick around. And so um, afterwards, she can always um, talk further. Um, mm -hmm. If you think of something, just jot it down. And so we'll be glad to um, to hear that. And so now the um, for the next probably 
40 minutes. Um, our next segment, I'm going to turn it over um, to my amazing husband, um, Elder Bullard, who will be moderating our panel where we will be listening to um, some folks share their experience with us. So without further ado, I give you the wonderful, the amazing Elder Keith Bullard. Go, sir. The amen, is amen, amen. Thank you, my my lovely better better half. And so, uh, <laughs> we are blessed today to have four uh, individuals who are going to share a little bit uh, about uh, those that have transitioned in their lives. And so, we have two men, two women, uh, and a, coming from uh different uh i guess perspectives uh, on this uh, we have one that has lost a parent one that's lost a sibling one that has well i won't say lost uh that has experienced the transition of a parent uh, the, uh of a sibling of a child and of a spouse and so it'll be interesting to uh get the various perspectives and so uh i want to introduce i think i'll introduce the ladies first i'll start with our guest panelists uh, as the other three are East Bay Bible members, and most of you uh, know them, but I will uh, introduce them properly. But our first uh, uh, lady I want to introduce to the East Bay Bible family and to all is uh, Diane Doss. Uh, Diane is a retiree from the Alameda County Probation Department, where she served for 32 years uh, as a deputy probation officer. Uh, Ms. Doss is the proud mother of three and the uh, grandmother of four. Uh, Ms. Doss is an active member of Imani Community Church, uh, where she participates in the choir and the praise dance ministry, uh, the greeters ministry, the prayer posse, and she serves as a congregational caregiver. So please welcome uh, Ms. Diane Doss to the panel. And that is her with the iPhone moniker. Okay, welcome. Uh, next, uh, we have our own uh, Deej uh, Franklin Gamble. Uh, she is a member of the Greeters Ministry. And uh, all of you know, and you see her beautiful smiling face all the time at the East Bay Bible Church. Uh, she is active in the Sunday school as well. And I see her there with Miss Glenda. And so welcome, uh, Sister Deej. Thank you for being on the panel. Uh, then our gentlemen, our distinguished uh, gentlemen of East Bay Bible Church that will be on this panel, uh, we have Brother Jason Wiggins, who is an active deacon, uh, and so just uh, you see Brother Jay all around, Big uh, Big Jay, uh, welcome to the panel. Uh, everybody, uh, please welcome uh, Brother Jason Wiggins to the panel. Yay. All right, sir. Thank you so much. And last but not least, uh, we save the best for last. Uh, we have uh, our our spiritual advisor of the East Bay Bible Church. Uh, he uh, helps us elders and the pastors in making sure we are doing things biblically sound. Uh, he is our, one of our, our great teachers, uh, leads the Wednesday, I believe the Wednesday uh, Bible study. Uh, we heard him earlier uh, in the sessions, uh, in these se uh, relationship series sessions. Uh, uh, the just a great uh, teacher, man of God, uh, father of uh, Pastor Derek. Uh, welcome to the panel, Brother Ellis Jackson. Hey. Now he's being he's being shy, he's being uh, modest there, but. <laughs> Yeah, because he'll he'll do one of these in a minute. So, <laughs> but anyway, so uh, so we're gonna get right into it. As uh, like I said, the time uh, got away from us a little bit, but we're not apologetic because uh, we heard some incredible information from Sister Vangeria and from Miss Michaela. Appreciate you, ladies. That was just awesome. I mean, I could have went on a little longer, but uh, that was just some awesome information and and getting us uh, to where we are now. And so I'm, we're gonna jump right into uh, the questions we were able. To Questions ahead of our panelists beforehand, so they had a little time to mull them over, but uh, we know it is not easy. I want to thank you panelists, first of all, for, for being willing to do this, because I know it's not never easy, because as as heard, grief is an ongoing process, and so it's, uh, it's it could be difficult to talk about some of this, but um, we definitely appreciate your being transparent with us. And so first of all, we'll start with the question of 
Uh, we just want to have you introduce to us uh, your loved one that transitioned. Uh, just give their name and maybe a little bit about them. And I'll start with uh, Ms. Deej on, uh, on that question. Oh, I think you're muted. You're muted. I had to be first. <laughs> yeah, well, just... I can go. <laughs> okay. Um, what was the question? Um, <laughs> Are we introduced? So, yeah, just tell um, us a little bit about. This is my husband, Ron Gamble. Um, he passed mm -hmm. in 2015. Um, <sighs> what else? He was a deacon at. Uh, the little Zion church that we had before and also at East Bay. Um, he was 71 when he passed mm -hmm. and would have been 79 last week. Wow. Um, so um, it's still some adjustment. So that's it. Okay. And from what I know a little bit about him, I know also he was into golf. I believe he was a golf <laughs> Yes, he was into golf and that was like his uh, favorite pastime. Mm -hmm. And um, he also started the uh, started and was president of the junior golf program at Metropolitan. Um, what else we need to know? He played yeah. piano, guitar and uh, trumpet. Oh, see, I didn't and, what else? All right, Keith, tell me, tell me something else. Um, and I, I move on. Like I said, we're kind of pressed for time. So okay. um, I will go to uh, Brother Jason. You could tell That's us a cool. little bit about uh, the one that transitioned in your life a little inf and a little background info on him. Um, uh, my mom, uh, Catherine Renee um, Jackson. Gibson. Um, she passed um, July uh, the 26th. Um, she was just uh, um, an avid lover of Jesus Christ, um, of her family. Um, and she was just uh, just an all around great person. She sung in the choir. Um, I mean, my time growing up, that's all I could remember. My mom was um, singing and just praising God and just being um, a lover of her people. Um, anybody that she came in contact with, felt, I mean, just just was all over my mother, um, especially those babies. Um, mm -hmm. If you had a crying baby, um, give them to my mother and the rest is history. <laughs> um, the rest is history. That baby was would be quiet and comfortable <laughs> Amen. Um, at the same time. So yeah, that's about my mom's. Amen, amen. And I remember your mom, she would always say to me and Lene, says, oh, there's my favorite couple. And uh, she probably said that to everybody, but I mean, she really made us <laughs> feel special uh, about that. And so you know, your mother was a great woman of God. And so I will move on to, uh, let's see, Miss Diane, tell us about, uh, you're your, uh, going to transition in your life. Yes, thank you. I am honored to be here. And I believe that God weaves a web that is absolutely perfect. So, Vangeria, your husband and my boys grew up together. I was in the pregnancy waiting room with their mother, with your husband's mother. So it's a small world. And, of course, when I think about Brother Ron, I think about how everybody loves to call him Big Papa. On November the 25th in 2018, my firstborn baby, mm. Dennis Lamar Doss, spoke these words. He said, and I quote, God is king. And just like that, he transitioned from being here on earth to being free. Um, one of the things that helps me, and, and you could stop me if you need to, but one of the things that helps me deal with the reality is the fact that he shared with me his theory. He says, I'm not in denial. I know what's happening. I can feel the deterioration in my body. But at the same time, 
I feel my life source, my life energy, and I need to be free. So I'm happy that he is free, and I pray that the Lord will deliver me when the time is right as well. Amen. 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 Definitely appreciate that, and definitely thank you for uh, being willing to be on our panel and to discuss this, and so definitely welcome. And so, I am honored. And so finally... Uh, brother uh, Ellis, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the one that transitioned uh, in your life. Uh, my dad, he died in 1987. And mm -hmm. my dad uh, was, is, uh, was and still is my only hero. Mm -hmm. And uh, taught me how to be a man. Taught me how to be a man and to take care of my my family. So, uh, yeah, my dad. Amen. Amen. And yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't get the pleasure. I don't think I've met your dad. Well, no, I didn't meet your dad. Uh, um, no. but yeah, I can tell no. just based on, uh, all of the Jackson, uh, posse at our church, I could tell he was, he must've been, uh, uh, part of my friends, just a hell of a man, uh, just from the offspring. I got it. Since you said that, uh, first job out of high school um i was i worked at toscana's bakery and uh, my boss was a gentleman from the south and when i went in going upstairs to fill out my application my father's the one who got me the job he turned around halfway up the stairs and he says if you're half the man your dad is <laughs> you'll be one hell of a man <laughs> And she said that I had to add that in. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so uh, we probably won't get to all of the questions we have. I know uh, Deej is probably grateful for that. Um, <laughs> but uh, we'll start with this. And uh, whoever uh, wants to chime in, uh, as uh, Sister Michaela just said uh, about the various stages of grief. So one of our questions here is on the acceptance. And so at what point, if ever, did you accept uh, the transition of your loved one? And by accept here, uh, we mean uh, acknowledge, uh, learn to live with, uh, if if at all, uh, and readjust your life accordingly. And so whoever wants to chime in. I can go first. Um, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Ladies is always first. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, my son had an illness. He suffered from colon cancer. And so we knew mm -hmm. at a certain point that there were no other physical opportunities for him in terms of treatment. Mm -hmm. So we knew what was going to happen. And my ability to accept um, has a lot to do with his attitude. Um, I realized that I was blessed. My son was 50 years old. I knew at that very moment of people who were dealing with illnesses with their very young children, terminal, very serious illnesses. So I knew that my son had been blessed to live 50 good years, 50 years where he was able to see his children grow up, 50 right. years where he enjoyed a career, 50 years where he had opportunities and privileges, and he took advantage of them. So that made it a lot easier for me, uh, along with his belief that what was going to happen to him was going to set him free. Amen. Amen. Uh, but Jason, you had a answer for, for that, that question? Uh, yeah, I, I think, I, um, to, to be honest, um, I think I I, I'm just um, I'm just now like really really just now coming to I guess grips and um, and, and understanding uh, that she's no longer here. Mm. Um, I I knew where she I knew where she she was going, um, and that was the I guess that was the comfort, um, but the human um, part in me, um, I guess couldn't, you know, uh, really wrap my, you know what I'm saying, wrap my mind or wrap my head around it. Um, and, and, and really until I think, um, this year, um, you know, she's been, she's been gone for what, two, three years now. 
um, and it's and it's fresh steel. Um, it's it's fresh steel, um, but um, I think I'm learning. I'm learning as I mature, um, and that's the big that's the big word for me is maturing. I'm 38 years old, but I'm still maturing um, to know that I'm going to grieve every day. Um, but um, I know I, I I just came to grips with it uh, this year. So I thank God. I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. And again, there's no right or wrong uh, to grieving because, again, you can't really compare yourself to uh, others in that. Uh, I think uh, Ms. Michaela would co-sign that, that, you know, as individuals, God made us unique and the grief process, I believe, is unique uh, as well. So uh, definitely thank you for sharing. Uh, anyone else? Uh, at what point did you uh, or if ever ex accept the loss of your loved one? I don't know, did uh, Ms. Deej? Or uh, Brother Ellis want to touch that? Well, um, for me, since I'm the uh, the oldest of, of my family, uh, when my when my father died, uh, I did not grieve for about two years. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't uh, because I was taking care, making sure my mother was okay, taking care of my brothers. Uh, even my pa even Pastor Ron uh, and Jason's mother, my sister Kathy, and I have a you know another brother, two other brothers. So it was it was two years, about two years. I was standing in the parking lot at work. I was a bus driver down in San San Jose, and I was talking to another Christian friend of mine, and we started. I started talking about my father. And I just lost it. Mm -hmm. It was two. It took me two years to cry. Uh, uh, to to just finally let that that grief out. And uh, so, you know, I'm, like I said, I I just I didn't have time. In oh. my way of thinking, I had to take care of because that's the way my father raised me. Mm -hmm. you know, they didn't. He never called me Ellis. He never called me Ray. He called me Pop. And he left certain things for me to do. When he he knew he was dying before even I even knew. Uh, but uh, he left certain things for me to do. And he was one when he said, do it, you did it. <laughs> you didn't ask why, you just did it. Mm -hmm. So it just took me a while. Amen. Amen. And so uh, I think uh, for me, um, Ron was was in and out of hospitals um, a lot. So mm -hmm. early on, I thought I could prepare myself um, for that day, but which of course we know we can't. Um, so I think. It probably took me a good year to really accept or try to try to move on. So that was it. Amen. Amen. And so uh, in our questionnaire there, I think the one question that was, um, I guess, that I was really interested in hearing from um, because I think this whole this this whole series we we want to um, kind of answer or talk about things where that the church has been silent on and the world obviously has a lot of opinions on, and so um, we think when someone is going through loss and grieving, we think we're being helpful, and so the the and maybe we're not because again, we don't really know what to say sometimes. And so the question I'm um, looking at here is what support from family, friends, or your church or others did you find most helpful uh, during this challenging time? For me. In other words, what was helpful and what wasn't? <laughs> for, for me, it was, it, was, it was scripture. I've always been a, since I was a kid, a study of scripture. Mm -hmm. So it was comforting 
to know, first of all, like my dad and my mom and my sister. It's comforting to know that they were Christians <laughs> because that my mom and dad introduced me to Christ at an early age. So I know they were Christians. So it's comforting to know that and to, un and to find out uh, early on in life that death did not mean an end to anything. Okay. Death is a separation, it means separation. They separated from life, this, this uh, temporal life into eternal life. And to know that I'm going to see him again. I, we lost my wife and I lost our first child. Mm. But I know uh, uh, my, 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 uh, my second oldest grandson, his name is Brian. He's named after Brian, uh, my, our first child. And I knew when he transitioned that he was in the arms of Christ. And I'll see him again. I was like David. He can't come to me, but I will go to him. So scripture, and it continues to help me uh, through 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 it. Because I like you say, the, the lady was saying, you know, you, you go, you don't grief does not leave it, you just move through it. Mm -hmm. You know. And so when I get to the point where, you know, I start to get, if I were to get sad or going to cry or something like that, I just ask God, what is it that you're trying to show me why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling? What is the lesson you're teaching me? Mm. Yeah. Amen. Hmm. Yes, yeah, Miss Diane, go ahead. I lost my mother back in 2001, but before she passed away, I was privileged to be in a circle with our pastor uh, at that time. And my pastor was quoting scripture from Hebrews, and she talked about and described the great cloud of witnesses as cheerleaders for the Lord. And my mother stopped her and said, yes, yes, I like that, cheerleaders. And so the discussion moved from that position to have the ancestors been coming to you? Have you noticed? Have you been seeing people? And she started calling out the people that were beckoning her as cheerleaders for the Lord to come forward. And so because my mother was clearly able to tell me that she saw her mother and that we would see each other again, I entered this journey with my son with a belief and an understanding that God will connect us again. Mm. And so I have to look at myself in the mirror because I do get sad sometimes. I have some tears that I shed. I call them tears of joy instead of tears of grief. Um, and I'm blessed because my son, much to my surprise and much to everyone else's surprise in our family, was the first of two babies, because back in prehistoric times, they didn't do sonograms, so I didn't know I was carrying twins. And so uh, I have his brother, and I have a daughter, and I collect children, because that's how I am, you know? And so I have to stop and think about the gifts that God has given to me. And so I'm able to realize and keep moving forward. And in terms of my church family, when we were having my son's celebration of life, I had shared some things. And my son didn't go to my church, so he didn't know everybody there. But when I turned around and saw the masses that had gathered to celebrate my baby's life, I was just overwhelmed and filled. And there was nothing that my church wouldn't do for me. There were people who got up to take care of this side or the other. I hadn't asked them to do that. It was just because of who they are and our connections via a God who serves, a God who provides, a God who makes a way even when you think there is no way. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Oh. Yeah, just to um, reiterate. Oh, go ahead, Brett Jays. I'm sorry. No, it's good. Um, my my church family for sure was uh was, was great. Um, in that time, like, I mean, amazing. Uh, my my family, um, was always and is still always, um, like, just ten toes down. Like, 
like the thing about it is like my uncles, like 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 they're my uncles, but like I got I got fathers and like they're men as men. And for me to um um kind of be in their presence, you don't want to disappoint. Um and I think when my mom passed, I kind of felt like a baby, um, because the one that I was around, you know, was no longer here. Um, but my aunties, like, like my aunties were, were like amazing. Like my, like my auntie Ella, like was amazing. Like my aunt Stephanie, like I hug her. I think I hug her tight now more than I ever have. Um, my auntie Jan, uh, I, I tell you, I mean, she, she's, she's, she's every bit of a mother because she has um, taken me in and she has given me love, but she's given me tough love. Um, um, she has helped me uh, tremendously in things that I am, am still going through to this day. Um, so just the just the love of 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 them, my cousins, um, but you know those those people that I look up to, um, still is is very uh, <clears throat> it's uh, I, I I never take it for granted. I never I never take them for granted. Amen. Um, so you know. Yeah, and I guess I can I can relate to that as well as uh, just kind of side note. I know when my mom passed, um, I had come home from work and uh, I saw the paper was still on the porch. And so I went and I, and I knew I kind of knew just from that because my mom, you know, she would always get the paper and, and read it. And so when I saw it was still on the porch in the afternoon, you know, in the early afternoon or late afternoon, early evening, I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> and so I walk in and, and sure enough. Uh, there she is. She hasn't gotten out of bed. She's still in the bed and she was there past. And uh, I called, you know, a few individuals, my my auntie who I was close to and my brother um, and, and Mary Tuff. And she was Mary Tuff was the first one uh, there because it was just me and my mom at the, at the house. And she she was the first one there. And, and right when she came in, I'll never forget. She 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 came in and told me. And this is while me and Lene were still dating. I mean, we hadn't, we, we weren't, we weren't married yet. And so she comes in and she says, you are now my son. And, and I know she meant that she's, she's lived her life uh, supporting that she, she's, she's been right there. And that's how I look at her. And so I can relate that it, it really helps to have godly people uh, in your life in times like these to help you through uh, the support. Um, and so I didn't mean to, get on that tangent but i thought it was relevant based on what you what brother wiggins just uh, had to share and uh, so miss d jonah did you have uh opinion on that uh, what support from family friends your church or others did you find most helpful oh i think you're muted truthfully i'm, I'm sure there was help but i cannot remember so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I know, like I said, I know during that time, your your it, mind is your mind is really kind of all over. Yeah, it's 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 too much going on, and yeah. you, you just you can't remember. I can't. Okay. So. Well, the B part of that question, I guess, was really what I was wanting to get, and I probably should have led with it. Um, based on your experience, do you have any suggestion on how those that are concerned can be of better help? Uh, to uh, someone in that in that situation, because again, we're gonna, you know, we're we're all gonna, you know, it's not we're all gonna we've experienced grief and we're all going to uh, at some point. And so, how can we, you know, how can we do better by those that are going through that process? I think the main thing, one of the things uh, we should learn how to do when somebody is going through that is learn how to listen. Mm -hmm. Just listen. Amen. Give advice. Don't give your opinion. Just listen. Yeah. And I guess if any of our, because I know we've all gone through grief on the line here, not just our panelists. And so uh, if, if anyone else has any thoughts on that as well, because again, we all want to, we all want to be better and, and minister to each other uh, uh, as best we can. Uh, 
Keith. Uh, th th this is your mom. I am. I'm not on the panel, but I, I do want to say that uh, what helped me. You know, I'm. A, I'm from. I was born into a family of all girls, and all of my sisters uh, transitioned and left me all alone. And I went through a really grieving process because I didn't have any anybody. I didn't have any sisters. I felt alone. And my daughter said to me one day, and I will never forget that this, she says, you know, you are still grieving because you, you, your loneliness is getting to you and you're grieving because you, no one knows your story. You didn't grow, you, the, 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 your sisters that grew up with you, they know what happened when you were 10 and 12 and 14 and 15 and all that, but nobody else does. So you are lo you're feeling alone. And that helped me more than anything yet, that nobody knows my story because all my sisters are gone. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Lene. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, Sister Diane, you any thoughts? Uh, how can we think, better, how can we do better in helping those that are grieving? I think that what I try to do for other people that are dealing with grief is just show up. Mm -hmm. You know, just go by. You know, it's not about the food necessarily. Sometimes it's just about having somebody to hold your hand for a minute. Go up there and wash dishes. Maybe just show up. You know, so. Um, and, and after the fact, you know, when things have calmed down, I think it's important still to reach out to people, to give them a phone call, um, just to see how they're doing, you know. And people experience their losses differently. And, and I try really, really hard to stay positive, mm -hmm. but I know that some people have a difficult time getting to that stage. Mm -hmm. um, and when they're sad, you know, all I can do is just maybe try to stroke them a little bit physically. Physical touch is important for me, and I try to offer it to other people as well. Amen. Amen. Anyone else on that? Okay. So, we know. Uh, oh, Sister Battle? Yes. Yeah. I was just wanting to say that uh, for me in that situation, uh, I did accept my husband's death and God helped me get through that. I know for sure where I was, but I always, I had a couple of people that I could talk to um, and all, you know, I would just, they knew when I called and said, I'm having a James Battle day. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they knew exactly where I was at that time. And believe me, I, I cherished them. So um, because I could, when I did that, I knew that they would, they would listen. And by the time I was off that call, we would just be laughing and having a good time. Um, one of just, bring out one of my callers was Deborah Stevenson. And I, um, right now I'm in a terrible state of grief. My other person is still here um, and I can call, but um, she's one that I called. And so I've been doing good. They were, we were talking about acceptance and then you, uh, I think it was Sister Mikhail Mims, I think said there's a trigger. This seminar is a trigger for me today. And it's been all morning. I've been up since four o'clock. Um, James Bow's been on my mind all day. And uh and I realized I said, Well, what's going on? And I realized when Sister Mim said anything can trigger, this seminar triggered it. Today and that's where I am. But oh, um, I need prayer. <laughs> when we finish, 
but I know that God, he, he elevates me all the time and he shows me favor all the time. And I, I'm so grateful to him. But right now, that's where I am. Y'all hit a trigger. <laughs> <laughs> but always, if you can, just get get somebody that you trust and that you can go to. Those, those two people I have, and I'll be honest, Deborah Stevens is one, Mary Tuff is the other one. Amen. And that's who I go to. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to burden her all the time now because I would split it up between Deborah and Mother and Mary. And uh, so, uh, but I, I thank God for them because uh, I had someone to talk to. And I, I just want to tell everybody, would it, if you can find that person that you can call all the time at any time, we all need somebody to hear us. And I love those two people. I know I tell her I love her, and she says I have to because God said I have to. You do. <laughs> but, yeah. You but, just you just like my funny her. stories, yeah. Babel. That's all. You just like my funny <laughs> stories. That's all. That's all. Yeah. And I, I'm done. <laughs> amen. Amen. And if so, I could say something, brother, brother Elder. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, God bless you all being so transparent, the panelists and that kind of stuff. And I know this is a pick brain group. I, y'all don't let me down by saying that. But uh, uh, pray for your your, your leaders and uh, your, your pastors. Um, it's a difficult thing, uh, like with my sister, Ellis is my brother. <clears throat> Jason is my nephew, Kathy's my sister. And right around the time Dr. Rita's transition um, and getting ready to mourn my father-in-law, all of this happening at the same time. And I remember being alone in my office, was getting ready to, thought I was going to bust. And the voice of God told me, not now, you agree, Blake, I got, you got work to do. Just like my brother said that dad had given him stuff to do. And it was just, a succession of things, a succession of home homes, trans, transitions. Uh, so I found myself not wanting to burden my brothers or my wife, anything like that. I found myself a lot of times in the backyard, just looking up to the stars, crying to God. Pray for your leaders. Because it's, you know, glad everybody has people that they can go to. But Burden gets, I know God got, I ain't complaining. Don't get me wrong. I ain't complaining. I, I'm praising God perfectly. Thanks for letting me share. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we probably do for sake of time. We probably won't have time to get to uh, some of these other questions, but we will uh, end, I guess, with the uh, closing uh, question. Um what do you want us to remember most about your loved one? Mm. Um. Her laugh, Jacob. Man. <laughs> um. <laughs> Ooh, that's a uh, um, yeah. I, I was I had a uh her 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 laugh was <clears throat> was very uh it was just, it was breathtaking to be honest with you i mean even through the midst of a bad day um uh, my mother's laugh can be um can 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 heal and it was it was so beautiful um it was so it's 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 amazing to me because i don't think too many people know but when my mom was in the hospital um two days after she went in, I went in. Um, we were on the same floor and our rooms were right next to each other. Mm. And I can remember myself trying to go to sleep. And I remember I just couldn't go to sleep. And all I can hear 
it's her laugh. Now, I don't know if she was laughing, but all I could know and all I could hear was her laugh, her smile, um, her hugs, um, her warm embrace. Um, I'm going to miss her little fingers rubbing against my face. Um, um, I'm just going to miss um, her. I'm, I'm missing her. It is well. It is well. It is well. And it nice. is well. Yes. <laughs> yes. I know she would lead that yeah. song and and, song. and yeah. <laughs> yes. Amen. Well. Anyone else? What do you want I us to that, remember? I think that what I want folks to remember the most about my son is that he was able one of the things that happened during his transitioning period, he called um, a family member who is also a pastor that lives in the state of Texas and told him, I know my birth date, but I don't know for sure my rebirth date. Mm. And so the, the <laughs> pastor friend arranged and flew from Texas to be there to help him recommit himself to God. And so what I want them to remember about my son is that he knew who he was, but he knew more importantly whose he was. And he had no real fear about leaving his earthly body behind and becoming free, soaring, as he described it. And so when I think about the unknown that tomorrow's offer, I think about the fact that there's going to be freedom. Yeah. And so people, you know, the message that I like to give is that if they can live today, okay, don't even worry so much about the yesterdays, but live today, every moment of the gift call today. Nobody knows the day nor the hour when the Lord will call our names. But what we do know is when God calls, we have to answer. And answer. Per that's what freedom is all about. Amen. Amen. All right, Brother Ellis, uh, Miss Deej, what do you want us to remember most about your loved one? Now let Deej go first. Ladies okay. first. Okay. I just want everyone to remember that um, he, he was uh, kind and generous and um, had a heart for um, helping young people. Yeah. He did. And um, something that no one knows, um, I was in, I would go to the grocery store and I would send coupons with him and he would not use them. And he would come back. I said, did you use the coupons? And he says, um, no. <laughs> anyway, it was it was like one of our joke things, and he would never do it. I would wrap the coupons around his money, and he would not use the coupons. But I just think um, he was um, really generous, and um, I, you know, I still miss him. Mm. Yes, as we all do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we miss him. Yeah, I think of Ron. I know he was a because when I look at Ron, he was a giant guy. I mean, he was like you know yeah. a basketball player at some point, and he was a giant guy. But he was just a gentle soul uh, as well. Thank you. Yes, brother Ellis. I I I would like folks to most not. Most of you have never met my dad, uh, but he was a he was a man's man. And what I like, I, I I my dad's been dead since eighty seven, and I have not told. I think I may have told Ron this story and my wife uh, when my dad the day my dad died. I'd like to leave this with y'all. I told you I was a bus driver, and I had made it to. I was driving this particular line. It ended up in Mountain View. 
And I had been uh, out late. I'd been at the hospital late that night. Matter of fact, my father ended up telling me that you need to go home and get some rest. So when I got to the end of the line, I went to the back seat and I laid down and I fell asleep. And I had a dream. And my father at this particular time, he was so weak, he couldn't walk. And in the dream, he was laying down and he was covered up. And this voice, this light was shining on him and the voice was saying, get up. And he looked up and he shook his head. He shook his head, no. And the voice said again, I said, get up. And my father said, I can't because I can't walk. And the voice told him one more time, get up. And my father stood up. And when he stood up, the voice said, welcome home, mm -hmm. but a faithful servant. And the minute that voice said that, the phone on my bus rang. So I had to run down and catch the phone. And they were telling me, because I had another six or seven hours to go, that I was going to get relieved when I got close to, to the yard, to the bus yard. And I knew then my father had died. But I do know mm -hmm. that the Lord welcomed him home. Mm -hmm. So, Amen. I remember that much about my dad. He's in heaven with his daughter mm -hmm. and she's singing to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's well. Well. It is well. well. It is well. Yep. Amen. 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 Well, I want to thank uh, all you panelists and all those, everyone that shared, uh, even uh, that weren't on the panel. Um, but we know that it wasn't, this might not have been the easiest thing, uh, you know, as we're picking at old emotional wounds. And so uh, we, we thank you for your transparency and, and participating and, and being subjected uh, uh, to this. So I'm sure hopefully it was edifying to uh, all that were that were here, um, and so uh, Sister Lene, are we going right into prayer, or was there something else? Okay, uh, I have been given the assignment to close this in prayer, and uh, we will be, uh, I guess, moving on into the next part of the program. And so, gracious and most holy Father, Lord uh, God uh, that that stepped out on nothing and created everything. Uh, the God of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, the God of the East Bay Bible Church, uh, the God of the Allen Temple Baptist Church. Lord, we thank you right now for what eyes have seen and ears have heard. Lord, we thank you for just the, the memories uh, that you have uh, blessed us with, Lord God, uh, as we think about those that have transitioned before us. Father God, we thank you for allowing uh, the paths of those individuals to intersect with our path. Uh, our life's journey, Lord. We thank you for the memories. We thank you, Lord God, uh, for being uh, your child, Lord God, that we don't uh, mourn as the world that has no hope, Father God, but we have your word and the word of God is true, uh, Lord God. And in the end, the word of God tells us that we win, uh, Father God, and that uh, death does not have the sting uh, that, it, that it once had, Father God. And so we thank you just now for uh, uh, everlasting life. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, uh, who paid the price uh, of uh, sin, Lord God, that, that should have uh, been us up there on the cross, Lord God. But we thank you for what Christ did and his shed blood uh, that purchased our place uh, in eternity with you. Lord God, where we will see our loved ones that have gone on before us, uh, Lord God. And so we thank you again, just for the privilege of being one of your children. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for the panelists that uh, opened themselves up to share in this way. We thank you for uh, my wife, who was the organizer of this. We thank you for Sister Vangeria, uh, Lord God, and her powerful teachment on today, Lord God. We thank you for uh, Miss Michaela, who brought uh, a wisdom, uh, Lord God, into, uh, Lord God, the stages of, of grief that we all go through, Lord God, because you made us, you created us, Father God, as relational beings, Lord God. Uh, we serve a relational God, 
uh, Father God, and, and you created us as relational beings that, Father God, we would have relationship first and foremost with you, Lord God, and then, uh, uh, Lord God, uh, with each other as your uh, creation, uh, Father God, that uh, we have the vertical relationship and the horizontal relationship, Father God. We thank you again for those relationships right now, Father God, and that even death uh, cannot separate us, uh, Father God, from your love and from those relationships, Father God, as we look uh, to uh, be with you in all eternity, we will see our, our parents again, we will see uh, those children again, we will see, uh, Father God, those friends and, and other family members that have gone on before, uh, once again, Lord God, if they have right relationship with you, we look forward to seeing them, Lord God, uh, in the hereafter. Lord, we thank you, we praise you. We love you for all that has been said and done here on today. Uh, Lord God, we just can't thank you and praise you enough. It's in the matchless, marvelous, magnificent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And thank God today. Amen. 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 All righty. Thank you, Elder. Appreciate you. Um, so wrap up. Um, okay, so somebody's echoing. Okay, thank you. Got you. Okay, so just before we wrap up, I just want to um, give you a chance to, to breathe <laughs> deeply because a lot of emotions were shared. The room will be open um, an additional um, 15 to 30 minutes after um, we're done. And so I just wanted to also um, share with you that next Saturday, right here on this same line at noon, we'll be talking about blended families. So please come back and join us. Um, and so uh, our another amazing speaker at the helm that will talk, be talking about Jesus, the ultimate blended family. Um, so come back and join us. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Derek um, for the offering um, and invitation. Um, and then after that, um, Pastor Ron uh, will close us out with the final prayer. And so is Pastor Derek, is he back in the room? Yeah, he's, he's here. Okay. All right. Apologies. So Pastor, I just, got a, just got a phone call right before. Oh, uh, okay. So <laughs> yes, so the, the offering or invitation, whichever order you want to do it, the floor is yours. All right. Um, if you have not accepted Christ as your as your personal Lord and Savior, um, we ask you to make uh, today your day um, for um, Christ died on the cross for your sins and the world's sins and was buried. But he did not stay dead. He rose on the third day and he is now seated at the right hand side of the father, desiring a relationship with him. So I'm urging anyone, if you want to accept Christ uh, today, you can let us know here and now. Um, you can uh, also um, talk to us when the line is open for a few minutes and we'll we'll get you started on your on your walk with Christ. Amen. 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 And if you want, if we, we want to stay true to the, the tithes and offerings, so you can go to our website, it's eastbaybible.com and you can go to the giving section and you can uh, give there. Our, uh, we still accept checks um, <laughs> at the at um, 11200 Golf Links Road. Um, has some would say not the rubber ones, but um, you can still send notes there, 11200 Golf Links Road in Oakland. Um, nine four six zero five. Uh, we just we just um, thank everyone for getting on. Um, thank all the speakers. A lot of great information. Um, no, it was a, a lot of emotions uh, going on. Especially, um, it is still fresh for my auntie, um, for for all of us. And um, I think Jason forgot to mention the potato salad. Um, that's a memory that we. <laughs> You can hold on to and uh, Jason and, and Dr. BJ and myself can all say that uh, she left us with with her recipe. So we'll keep that um, going on um, for a long time. Uh, and then I just one last thing I want to say, I know um, my, my my grandfather um, passed when I was only about four or five. So I only have like two or three memories of him. But every time I see my dad, every time he tells me something every time he he teaches me something i know it's coming from him from from my grandfather and so when i want to see my grandfather when i want to know my grandfather i look at my dad cuz like he said he's a man's man and he and so my father's taught me to be a man 
And my brother and I are sharing that information with our with our with our children, our sons. And so that's generational um, wealth in my in my eyes because it's generational lessons, it's generational teaching of how to be a, a man. So, and now my father's crying. I didn't mean to make him cry, but uh, <laughs> um, I just I needed to share that. Um, as he said not you know not many have met his father but if you look at him you see his father his father okay don't turn that this way <laughs> hey, don't turn it towards him hey, amen god bless you all uh, to sister harvey and to sister mims god bless you God bless you. God bless mm -hmm. you. You surely blessed us today. Amen. Mm -hmm. We just Amen. cannot thank you enough. We sure do praise God for both of you and praise God for your ministries. Praise God for allowing you time to share with us. Um, and uh, we just thank you. For that. I'm, I'm going out on a limb because I know that Brother Bullard and Sister Bullard trying to make this an annual uh, event. So, you know, uh, just kind of mark the calendars because we may want to use you again <laughs> in one of the upcoming seminars. But God bless you. Uh, I wanted to say hello to my sister-in-law, Sister Deb Greer. I don't know if she's still here. She logged on late. Uh, but I wanted to for everybody to know she was here and to thank her for being here. Um, she, uh, her husband transitioned a year or two ago also. So we just thank her for being on the line. I think when they got a little emotion, she got emotions. Mm -hmm. um, we as a body of Christ want to help the body of Christ grieve and suffer. And one of the things I want to leave you all with uh, before we pray out of this is let us get out of the habit. I know we, one of the speakers was talking about, I think Sister, Sister Babs was talking about uh, the loss of, you know, dams and extremities, stuff like that. But when we're talking about the transition of levels, let us get out of the habit of saying, especially those that are, we know that are children of God, that they are lost, because surely they're not. Mm -mm. They are right now. Mm -hmm the blessed bosom of our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that we help ourselves and others in grief is the language of God. And the only ones who were lost are those who purposely reject his son, Christ Jesus. Amen. And so for our loved ones that we knew, our parents that introduced us to Christ, our siblings, our coworkers, our friends that we knew were children of God, they are not lost. I just, that's a major step in a brief process is to know, as Paul wrote, I don't want y'all leaving here ignorant hmm. about those who have gone on before us that are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. They were in Christ Jesus. You can't not be in Christ Jesus. <laughs> so they are with Christ Jesus. So God bless you all. God keep you. <laughs> And uh, let's bow for a word of prayer. If there's nothing else, Sister Bullard. Okay. Yes, All right. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Father, Jesus the Christ, your only begotten Son, who is our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer, he is our salvation. By the power of your Holy Spirit, we just humbly come before your throne to shout hallelujah for what you've allowed us by your Spirit to hear, to share to be transparent, to know that there are seasons of grief, but know, Heavenly Father, that no season we go through is bigger than your power, that's bigger than your comfort, that is bigger than your wisdom. And so we just thank you through Christ, we are your children. And all the benefits that are wrapped up in Christ Jesus, we have privy to. We just praise you, thank you for that. We thank you for every soul that is here with us this afternoon. Thank you for their homes, their, their spouses, their children. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just pray that you would continue to bless and keep. Um, and we ask Heavenly Father that you would bless us as we go through the rest of this afternoon. 
And if it be your will, prepare us tomorrow, Heavenly Father, that we all can arise in health and strength and gather at uh, the local assemblies that we all gather at with the one mindset, that is to make a joyful noise, lift up and praise the name of our Father in heaven. Truly, you are worthy of all praise and all honor. This prayer we lift up to you in the matchless name of King Jesus. Amen and thank God. Amen. 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 The room will be open another 15 to 30 minutes. Miss Diane, thank you for being on our panel. Appreciate you. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. All thank right, you, Dee, you didn't thank hurt. You. It didn't hurt, Dee. You didn't hurt. <laughs> uh, Sister Lene, can I just ask if, because I know I, I opened it up, if anyone wants to accept Christ, um, I do have another engagement I got to go to. And mm -hmm. so if some, if we're all on here are saved um, by Jesus, you want to put a thumbs up real quick. And then I know we're, we're a saved room and I can head on out. And if not, we got you back. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you, Pastor. You guys take Thank care. Uh, yeah, thank you, Vangeria. You are Vangeria. awesome. Yeah, thank you, Vangeria. Yeah. Thank you so <laughs> much. much. Yeah. I guess Michaela had to leave, huh? Yes, yeah, she had to. She Hi, Miss Cheryl. Uh, Hi, how are you? Good. That's good. How you doing, Lady Jan? I'm hanging in there. I'm well. <laughs> I'm well. Yeah, you, you, I'm going to go read now, Jan. Okay. Yeah, for tomorrow. Uh, oh, I'll I'll call you. Yeah, call me. All right. Mr. Harvey, thank you again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Really blessed us this afternoon. Thank and you. Right. You're most welcome. Most welcome. Right. Thank you, Nigeria. Okay, I'm going. Got that one. Uh, good job. You guys okay, did a good mama. job, Lene. Oh, thank you. Everybody. Yes. It was a, yeah, a little triggering, but you know, we, we had to have the conversations. Yeah. So that's what we're that's what we're doing. Yeah. No, we Thank you for we sharing me. Oh, geez. Now that yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, me up. <laughs> I'm gonna have to have a conversation with old lady battle later on today and get on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's okay. But I love it. <laughs> All right. Okay, Ms. God Ms. willing, I'll see you guys. In the morning. Great, Thank you. Much love. Oh, much love to you too, baby girl. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Oh, Thank you for your time. Oh, I love you. Miss Vangeria. Hey, Vangeria. Yes. Hi, Vangeria. Hi, Vangeria. Hi, Vangeria. Hi, Vangeria. Hey, Vangeria. Yes. Can I they show you my book? She told I me. Mean, I don't see Vangeria that much in the office, but I, 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 I'll tell you about that, Vangeria. Okay. Okay. All right. And Brother Holloway had a for you, Benjeria, also. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, Come on, Brother Holloway. I got to go. <laughs> I you know, my mother suffered, and I was glad that God took, brought her home. Mm -hmm. I watched her suffer. Mm. It was harder for me to take that suffering to the point that I waited six, seven hours just mm. to tell the doctor to stop the chemotherapy mm. because they had a protocol of doing it, doing it at the high strength of it all. And I was glad I didn't want to lose my mother, but I didn't want my selfish love to hold her back, to suffer because I didn't want her to go. Amen. So Amen. I wasn't wrong in feeling that way, was I? Mm -hmm. No. We have compassion. That was compassion for your loved one. Amen. To, to say, okay, I can let go. I can let go so that she can have glory up in heaven. Amen. Yes. So, yes. Amen. I celebrate you for, you know, being able to say uh, there's a there is a there's a brighter place, right? We know 
uh, that that heaven, that 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 those pearly gates and them gold, them gold floors and walls is a gonna be a beautiful place. It's just the, and more than anything to be able to see our Savior face to face. Amen. So what a what a blessing that you were able to be at that place to be able to say, Lord, I'm good. I'm good. And yeah. take your home. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Appreciate you. Praise the Lord. I may add that I want all of us to know that the, you also, uh, something we try to teach and say there uh, at East Bay is that always remember the God we serve, God that redeemed us is an emotional God. Mm -hmm. emotional. We are yes. made in his image and likeness. Yes. But we have emotions. Yes. Just like our God does. Mm -hmm. And it is okay to have those emotions. Okay. It's okay to have. It's okay to cry. Amen. It's okay to right. be where you're okay. at any yes. given day, mm -hmm. because your emotions have not gotten past God. He knows because He, knows. he blessed you with it. Yes. Right. And your love for your mother was not selfish. That's right. It was not selfish. Mm -hmm. Amen. I prayed for my mom when she was transitioning, and told God, I mean, I asked him to heal mm -hmm. on this side of heaven because I've yes. seen you do it. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. yes. I know you. Yes. And, you know, it's, that's how much I love my mother. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, God's response was that that's your mother. Uh, that's my child. My child. Amen. Is on the other side of heaven. Mm -hmm. And that's where he took my mom. So never think that your love for your mother was selfish. Oh, absolutely not. Never think that because you're in your emotions, even now, mm -hmm. that God is displeased with you because mm -hmm. it's not. It's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a God. If I was there, I would lend you my shelf. Show. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, well, yeah. Deacon Holloway, Deacon, Deacon Holloway, you talking about somebody that know your story? She knew your story. Yes, she did. Yeah, she knew yours. Your mom know, know your story. So, yes. So then I got to go. See you guys in the morning early. <laughs> she hang up. Will she hang us all up? Huh? Um, okay, so if, well, yeah, you, need, you need to leave your room open just in case. Okay. Leave, all right. Thank okay. you. Thank you so Amen. much. Again. All right. See you Thank next you week. Again, so sorry. God bless you, Pastor. All right. Bye, Keith. Y'all take Bye. care. <laughs> Great job. We give God glory. Amen. Good job, Miguel. Good job. Good job. Yeah, y'all did a good job. All awesome right, well, job. That opened up a lot, a lot of emotions. Well, we kind of know it would. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I was trying to turn running, listening through to, to, to this panelists and the questions and I still it still hasn't stopped my head spinning it's how uh, what ministry what could the body of these may mm. be how can we make ourselves available how can we um, once we've gone through the transition period of memorial service middle What's the process for us? How can we, uh, instead of putting it on one body, one whatever, how can we uh, make sure that there's an occasional phone call, letter of thinking of you, or here's a card with a, I don't know, gift card for Starbucks or something, just to <laughs> let them know that they're not alone, that we're still thinking and praying for them it's just trying to think of what we you know holy spirit guide us to something and put together somebody can champion that yeah, yeah and, and you know maybe um after the entire series is over i don't know if you want to let's when, brainstorm let's get together in prayer and brainstorm well i was gonna say yeah yeah a brainstorming session i don't know if you want that to be um when married couples meet again, and that won't be until June, um, the second weekend in June, or if you, you know, want to start it at your, um, with the elders meeting.
or do no, you just let's do both? Call? Let's do both. Let's, yeah. let's or 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 mm -hmm. or you can have like a just a general brainstorming. If you come to any of the sessions, come to the Zoom because we're just going to be brainstorming based on what we mm -hmm. hear. So you you know, kind of three ways to to yeah. Let's do it all three of them. Let's you put know. it together. Yeah. So, yeah, because it's it's um because they're three four wildly different topics, exactly. so, <laughs> which yeah. is you know which is totally totally cool. And so yeah, some things come you know automatically you know will come yeah. in, in the thought processes and stuff. So you know there there are a lot of opportunities there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, so that's pretty 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 cool. And yeah. so it's trying to. I, mean, see I just I want to commend you and still let you know that we're